Hey everybody, welcome back to Football Talk with Vinny. In today's video, we're going to be going over the Cincinnati Bengals. So obviously with the next team in this series, it's the Cincinnati Bengals. They did pick fifth overall. So again, that's why we're covering them next because again, we're doing it in order based on draft position. So with the Cincinnati Bengals, we'll start with the offseason in terms of free agency. Not really a lot of moves. They signed a couple guys like Trey Hendrickson. He was a defensive end from the New Orleans Saints. He's actually a rotational player, but last year he got some starting time. He actually finished with 13 and a half sacks. So he had a breakout year, um, which is a good thing, but also a bad thing because you never want to pay someone for kind of a breakout year um, because now you're expecting that to happen throughout the duration of this contract. So hopefully they get a good player um, and hopefully he doesn't go back to really what he played his first couple years. But then again, he wasn't getting a lot of starting time. So obviously he's going to be the starter in Cincinnati. So hopefully they're going to get value with the player that they paid. And then they had a couple other signings, Chidobe Awuzie, the ex-Dallas Cowboys cornerback. He actually had a pretty good season. Um, it's tough to say a pretty good season when he played for one of the worst defenses in the league in the Dallas Cowboys, but um, pretty good corner. Again, he's super young. He's 25, 26 years old. So again, for the Cincinnati standpoint, you know, it never really hurts to get a young player on your defense. Um, again, you have a young team in the Cincinnati Bengals. So I think it'll be a good addition to their team. Also signed a guy, another cornerback, Mike Hilton and Eli Apple. So they did uh, actually get a bunch of corners. And then one of the last three I just want to go over was Riley Reef. Um, probably going to play right tackle for them. Um, so again, anything to do to help the offensive line, to help Joe Burrow be protected is a good thing. So again, I think that'll be a good move for them as well. Obviously, it was really all about obviously getting Joe Burrow back healthy, but also the draft. You know, with the fifth overall pick, they did decide to go with Jamar Chase instead of Penny Sewell. Again, um, I was on record. I think I would have taken the offensive lineman just because a bunch of reasons, right? Um, I think offensive linemen in the draft, at least, they are more likely to be Pro Bowl caliber players right away than the wide receiver position. Also, just in general, they actually hit more. And by hit, I just mean usually when you draft a wide receiver in the first round, the chances of them being a starting caliber player are one of the lowest of any position in the draft. And offensive line is the exact opposite. When you draft an offensive lineman, it has one of the highest hit rates in the entire NFL. But again, Jamar Chase is a generational talent wide receiver. Again, it's not going to matter. Um, again, at the end of the day, as long as you draft a player that plays well, that's all that really matters. It's all, that's all you're really looking for from the draft at that point. Now, on the second round, they did go offensive lineman. They went offensive tackle, Jackson Carmen. Um, again, if you don't go offensive line the first round, the fact that they won it in the second round is great because, again, a second round pick, especially, especially Cincinnati's, right? It was 46th overall, right? You are hopefully getting still a starting caliber tackle. Um, so, again, hopefully, if you're able to build that offensive line, and again, you did lose AJ Green, so if you replace him with Jamar Chase, you've got a lot of young weapons there. So, maybe that offense could be, you know, very good this coming season. And then at pick 69, you did take a defensive end. Joseph Asai, um, so again, um, you did lose Carl Lawson, so you wanna go ahead and replace him as well. Obviously, you did sign Trey Hendrickson, so hopefully adding some more young talent to that defensive line, um, just to get that overall defense to play a lot better than it played last year. And again, like I always say, I really like to focus in on just the top 100 picks. Those are most likely the guys to even play um, and get a lot of starts or just a lot of snaps at their respective positions. But I will go over the rest of the draft, so you had a pick 111, Cameron Sample, a defensive end. So again, trying to bolster that D-line. You know, maybe he's a rotational defensive end, so that would help. At pick 122, you had Tyler Shelvin, um, a defensive tackle. Um, so again, you know, obviously with three of their first five picks, you are addressing the defensive line. So it's never a bad thing. Um, at pick 139, Deontay Smith, an offensive tackle. Um, at 149, Evan McPherson. So he's a kicker. He probably has a good shot of actually getting a starting job, I would think. Any kicker that's drafted, usually um, one or two kickers get drafted in a draft. So for him to get drafted, you have to think highly of him. Maybe he does have a good job of actually getting the starting job. At 190, you went with the center and Troy Hill. At 202, Chris Evans, a running back. And at 235, Watt Herbert, a defensive end. So again, um, with those last couple picks, you're just hoping that some of these guys maybe play on special teams, you know, maybe some of the interior D linemen that you drafted. Hopefully some of them are maybe just rotational players in their first year or two, right? So at least they're contributing to the football team um, in the ways that they can. But again, like I said, you wanna really focus on those first three picks, 
right? Because those are the guys that are more likely to get a lot of starts. So again, you went wide receiver, offensive tackle, and defensive end. So I really liked that, okay, even though you didn't go offensive line with your first overall pick, you did address it in the second round, and then you also addressed the defensive line in the third round. So I do like the overall draft. Again, at this point, when you have a franchise quarterback, it's all about him and keeping him healthy. And if he can make improvements from year one to year two, right, you can see the Cincinnati Bengals winning a lot more games. Real quickly, let me get to the salary cap. So they actually have $17 million of salary cap space for this year. So obviously, um, if you're not familiar with how it works, any unused cap space for this year actually gets rolled over into next year. And next year, the salary cap is at 62 million. So, um, and those are stats according to overthecap.com. And again, that 62 million does not take into account the rollover. So it's gonna be 62 million plus the 17 million, and maybe they sign a guy or two in these next month or two before the season starts. But for the most part, it's gonna be about 17 million that rolls over. So they're gonna have a lot of cap space to sign some guys for next year as well. So they've really set themselves up um, to not only be a good team maybe this year, but even if they fall short of the playoffs, they're gonna have a lot of cap space to sign a guy or two, maybe in a spot that maybe they had really terrible outcomes this year and you can kind of address those in free agency next year and also you're gonna have the draft as well. But let's get into the season. Um, I think obviously for this year, for the Cincinnati Bengals, again, very young team, which uh, you know it's a common theme for a lot of the teams that are picking in the top five or 10. They're all young teams. They knew they were in a rebuilding phase and you're just trying to improve the roster and get better. Um, obviously with Cincinnati, you do already have the established quarterback at this point. Um, and again, he was hurt last year. I think if he had started more games, they probably would have won another game or two and wouldn't have been picking in the top five, might have been closer to that top 10. But again, it is what it is. So going into the season, I think if they are able to stay healthy and they're able to keep Joe, Bur Joe Burrow healthy, excuse me, I do think this team is a team that can um, probably win anywhere from probably like six to eight games, maybe nine. And again, at that point, you are hopefully in December still pushing for a playoff spot, especially now that they've added that 17. And again, I think if Cincinnati can push for a playoff spot, even if they don't get in, it'll be a successful season because it will give them a lot of momentum going into the next off season. And it'll kind of instill a lot of confidence in the Cincinnati Bengals and also the fans that, hey, like we were so close this year and next year is going to be the year where we get into the playoffs. You know, it's the reason why everyone likes the NFL though. So I don't think I would be shocked if Cincinnati made the playoffs. Again, with that being said, um, they are probably one of the lower rated teams in terms of if you were going to rank all the teams and their likelihood of making the playoffs. But again, you know, if Gerald Burrow can take a huge step in year two, it's certainly not a huge shocker if he can play to like maybe a Pro Bowl caliber level. You know, it certainly wouldn't be a huge shock if they did make the playoffs. I just think that maybe they're about a year away. Like I said, I look for them to win maybe anywhere from six to eight games this season. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe. It's the best way to help the channel out. And thank you guys so much. I look forward to the next video. Bye.